Hey, in this video, we will look into Ethereum name service, or ENS. In particular, we will attempt to formulate a clear answer to the question, what is ENS in crypto? We, as humans, have a tendency to search for shorter paths, especially when it comes to referring to something with words. From an early age, children get nicknames like sweetheart, buddy, or sweetie. Sometimes, these nicknames follow a person for the rest of their life, especially when they find partners. This tendency is not limited to children. We tend to call restaurants, shops, or even items by nicknames that we created inside our social circles or even ethnic groups. As an example, let's take McDonald's. Definitely not a long word to say. However, in different countries, people use different shortenings to refer to it. As an example, in the UK, people call it Mackie D's. In Scotland, it's called McD's, while the Japanese call it Maku. In the world of crypto, project name shortenings are also common. However, the ecosystem had a bigger problem than long protocol names. User wallet addresses are made of a string of randomly selected characters that can be a real burden when making transactions. To solve this problem, the Ethereum name service was introduced. Welcome to Crypto Finally Explained, the most crypto-friendly educational YouTube channel for actually learning crypto. Here, I finally explain crypto topics using simple animations, visual doodles, and real-life examples, so no matter if you're 5 or 75, you'll be able to understand it. In this video, I will try to shed light on topics like what is ENS in crypto, how does ENS work, and how to get an ENS domain. Moreover, we will look into the tokenomics of the Ethereum name service coin. So, let's get right into the video. To kick things off, the question of what is ENS in crypto could be easily answered when looking at the ENS definition. In simple terms, Ethereum name service is a domain name service launched on, as the name suggests, the Ethereum blockchain. If you don't know much about website creation or the overall mechanics behind the internet, you might wonder what is a domain name service, or a DNS. Well, in a nutshell, similar to how a crypto wallet address is a string of characters, back in the day, the website address was a line of numbers called IP addresses. While IP addresses are now used to identify every unique device on the network, back then they were used to enter certain websites. Thanks to DNS, to visit my channel, you would type youtube.com slash at CryptoFinallyExplained. On the contrary, back in the day, you would have to submit a numerical combination of something like 46.896.387.198. Thus, it is safe to say that ENS operates in a smaller manner to DNS as it allows users to shorten typically long wallet addresses into human-readable word combinations. Before we go into the specifics of how does ENS work, let's see what is the history behind Ethereum name service. The first signs of ENS can be traced back to the Ethereum white paper published by the network's co-founder Vitalik Buterin in 2013. If you want to know more about how Ethereum came to life, I have a dedicated video covering everything from A to Z when it comes to ETH. So, three years later, in April of 2016, Nick Johnson introduced a protocol that would eventually turn into what we now know as the Ethereum name service. With the ENS proposal, Johnson hoped to create a platform that would introduce a resolution to offering human-readable names for crypto addresses and resource identifiers on the blockchain. Over a year after the proposal, on May 4th of 2017, the project was finally launched. However, the development did not stop there. The team behind ENS continued to work and introduced support for dApps, Moreover, it started offering 3 to 6 character names, a significant reduction from its initially offered 7 character domains. The ENS significance can be noticed by looking at the companies that have integrated this technology. ENS is widely used on platforms like Brave, Coinbase, Etherscan, Opera, Rainbow, and Uniswap. Impressive, right? As we now know what is ENS in crypto, it's time to explore how does ENS work. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, ENS is a solution built on the Ethereum blockchain. In particular, it is built on two Ethereum-based smart contracts, the Registry and the Resolver. The Registry, as the name suggests, logs all of the domains on the ENS network and holds the essential information about them, including who is the owner and the Resolver. It is worth noting that ENS domain owners in a Registry can modify subdomain ownership, move the domain ownership to another address, and address its Resolver or the Time to Live, TTL. Just a quick heads up, TTL refers to the time that the record remains stored or cached. The second smart contract, the Resolver, translates the human-readable name into a machine-readable address. This process is similar to how DNS converts IP addresses into URLs. The Resolver's goal is to match the domain address to a corresponding website, user, or address. The Ethereum name service also allows the owner of a domain to have or control subdomains. For example, if I shorten crypto finally explained to CFE and have a domain called CFE.eth, I can also create and manage subdomains like ens.cfe.eth or explainer.cfe.eth. At this point in the video, you may wonder what .eth means. In a nutshell, it identifies the top-level domain, also known as the native suffix. 
The .eth suffix gives the domains all of the underlying security of the Ethereum network. However, it is also worth noting that ENS also supports DNS names like .com, .io, .org, .app, and so on. That said, the mentioned suffixes can be used for ENS domains only if the person registering it already owns the DNS name with such an index. So, to summarize what is an ENS domain, we can simply say that it is a human-readable version of the originally extremely long crypto wallet address. Now, let's answer the questions of how you can get an ENS domain name and how to use an ENS domain. To get an ENS domain name, users must first own a non-custodial Ethereum wallet and some Ether, or ETH. The wallet will be used to link the user domain name on ENS and help purchase the actual domain. Ether is necessary to purchase the domain and pay transaction fees. It is worth noting that ENS domains have yearly renewal fees. In particular, domain names with 5 characters or longer cost users around $5 per year. Investors who want to hold a domain name with 4 characters have to pay $160 per year, while names with only 3 characters cost a whopping $640 per year. So, how to get an ENS domain name in the first place? Well, first of all, users must search for available names on the ENS application. After finding the name that they like, they start a 7-day public auction for it. When the user opens a public auction, everyone who has once hearted the name immediately gets a notification about the auction. As the process opens, bidders have 72 hours to place their sealed bids with the maximum amount that they're willing to spend on the name. Afterward, the reveal phase takes effect. For the next 48 hours, bidders have to reveal their bids or risk losing submitted funds. After the reveal, the highest contender wins the auction. If the person wins the race for the domain, they receive the entire deposit back, except for a 0.5% fee which was burned in the process. As I mentioned before, if the user fails to reveal their bid, the entire fund is said to be burned. To understand this process better, you can think of it as shopping at an online secondhand shop. It is not how it works in practice, but imagine that you hard a sweater. One day, you get a notification saying that 5 other people are also considering buying it. So, now you have to contemplate. Do you really want the sweater? How much are you willing to pay? Finally, you submit your offer and wait for the seller's answer. That's rather similar to acquiring an ENS domain. Let's say you won the auction for the ENS domain CryptoFinalExplained.eth. What's next? Before you start exploring what to do with your ENS domain, you must register it. Let's look into how to use the ENS domain application to do exactly that. To finish this procedure, you will have to complete two transactions, requesting the domain registration and actually registering it. Once you click the Request to Register button, you will have to pay a small network fee for the request to go through. The price of the network fee greatly depends on how fast you want it to go through. The more money you are willing to spend, the faster your request will be processed. After the request transaction appears on the blockchain, the system will check if no one else attempted to register the domain name during the same time frame. If everything goes well, you can proceed to the last step. Once again, you will have to sign another transaction, which at this point will cover the ENS domain price and the network fee. After this transaction is completed, the domain name will be officially yours and it will appear as a digital collectible in your wallet. To make the ENS domain an actual address, you will have to set the reverse record. This process is done directly on the ENS application. So, what can you do with the ENS domain? Well, it is most likely that you bought the domain to ease the process of someone sending you cryptocurrencies, as with ENS, they no longer need to write long and complex addresses. However, apart from the most useful use case, there are plenty more. The ENS domain can be used as a website URL, Twitter profile name, Discord or Telegram handle, and even email address. People usually use ENS domains as their social media handles to show their involvement in the NFT and Web3 spaces. A good example is Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin, who uses Vitalik.eth as his Twitter handle. By using ENS domain names, users can also inspect transactions and holdings of the Ethereum wallet linked to that domain, allowing them to be true detectives. Moreover, ENS can also be used as non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, due to their ERC-721 standard nature. In a nutshell, this means that owners of ENS domain names can store, transfer and trade them as any other digital collectible. In fact, Ethereum name service has a verified collection on OpenSea with thousands of domain names ranging from BinanceWeb3.eth to Metaverse.eth. Now that we covered pretty much every aspect related to how to get an ENS domain, how it works or what to do with it, it's time to switch our glance once again to the ENS. In particular, its native Ethereum name service token. As with the majority of blockchain related projects, Ethereum name service also has its native ENS coin. Due to its nature as an ERC20 token, which essentially signals that it's a digital asset created on the Ethereum blockchain, ENS can be bought, sold and traded. So, how could we answer the question of what is the ENS token's role in the whole ENS ecosystem? Well, 
The answer is very simple. The ENS coin is mainly used as a governance token. This means that the holders of the Ethereum name service coin can have their say on the growth and direction of the platform. Therefore, we can say that ENS tokens mainly serve as ballots in a decentralized autonomous organization, or a DAO. If you want to know more about how DAOs operate, I have a dedicated video for this topic. Okay, back to ENS. In terms of tokenomics, the ENS coin has a hard cap of 100 million tokens. Upon launch, 50% of the tokens were moved to the community treasury. The rest of the tokens were split in half. One part of these tokens was given to the contributors, while the second part was set aside for airdrop distributions. Alright, what is an ENS airdrop? In simple terms, it's a process of ENS token distribution to domain holders. The amount of tokens each domain holder receives depends on the total registration time of their domain and the time of future registrations. It is worth noting that the more active domains users own, the higher token distribution they will receive. Airdrops are available to users who bought an ENS domain name before the end of October of 2021, or users who have purchased the domain name but haven't linked it to their wallets. Wondering where to get your ENS coins? The token can be purchased on centralized crypto exchanges like Binance and Coinbase. Moreover, it is also available on decentralized crypto exchanges, including SushiSwap and Uniswap. At this point in the video, we have pretty much covered every aspect of what is ENS in crypto, hopefully helping you understand the service better. However, if you are still not sure about something, let's conclude everything that we just covered. In a nutshell, the Ethereum name service is the domain name service built on the Ethereum blockchain, offering more convenient, human-readable names to long crypto wallet addresses. ENS coin owners govern the service. It is worth noting that anyone can buy ENS. The only thing investors need is an Ethereum wallet and some Ether. To fully enhance the potential of ENS names, users must first register them. Afterwards, apart from helping others find your wallet address faster, the ENS domain can be used as a social media handle or website URL. It also can be stored, transferred, or traded. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more beginner-friendly explainers on all things crypto. That's it for me today, and I will see you in the next one.